typical layout of a construction uh, a underground uh, station right. the underground stations as consisting of entries the station building as such and the ancillary building if you see the station building there are three levels one is the roof level a concourse level and a base level the base level there will be a, a small area of platform level where people can board the train okay the train will be coming from this tunnel it's a since it is an underground station in the typical uh, underground station if you see this are all the entries the people uh, who can come and uh, enter to the station once they enter into the station this particular concourse level or the concourse area which we call it as where the people can collect the tickets go into the area called auto fare collection uh, afc gates means, uh, where the fares are been all the fares have been collected they can show the token and uh, the gates are open so the people can go inside paid area and below through a staircase if they come down there will be a platform area where the train arrives or departs in that location if you see the other two portion of or the two wings of the station are being uh, completely uh, controlled by the utilities like a tunnel ventilation system which we can see at a later uh, slides the tunnel ventilation system the air conditioning system and the electrical system for the entire uh, uh, station buildings would be controlled here at this at these two locations the station control room would uh, would be placed maybe in the middle of the area so that the station controller can directly uh, monitor the people's movement and all and where he controls the complete uh, operation of the stations and the uh, signal systems for the trains then uh, this is the typical uh, cross section of the tunnel where your train comes from. so there are so many if you see more than 30 uh, utilities are being run through the tunnel for the metro say some signal signal and systems uh, cables are being run from one location uh, means one station to other stations that particular cables will be there there will be electrical cables which carries the electricity from for the station buildings so the electrical cables will be there so that has got some uh, particular trace you will be having it there are tunnel lighting system inside the tunnel there will be uh, dark so for in order to have a maintenance work there will be a lighting systems so that particular lighting system will be there there are cables for uh, telephone signals like if you go inside that inside the tunnel you can also use your uh, cell phones because the the, uh, the they call it as a tetra cable which gives the signals to the in the tunnel area okay so those kind of utility will be there there will be a tunnel uh, platform where in case of any train fail failure occurs or in case of any signal problem the people can just get down and walk through this uh, particular platform and reach to the next station or uh, there are water lines there are uh, fire fighting water line all those stuff will be there in that. there will be uh, in the bottom of the tunnel if you see uh, in order to have a flat surface there will be a concrete and uh, there will be a, a particular drainage system which is being if in case of any water being in case of any fire the water is being uh, used to set up the fire inside the location so all this water will be collected through the drainage system and it can be collected and it will be pumped out of the system like it will, there will be some in the tunnel locations from there the water will be pumped out of the station if you see this is the particular view of a tunnel uh, cross section which is which is a typical thing which i was saying see this is the the overhead uh, electrical uh, line where the train gets the power so high voltage power and this is the one which i call it as a tetra cable where you get the, the telephone signals these are all the signal cables this these are the tracks which is being done and these are the water um, line for uh, fire fighting works these are the power cables which runs these are all your platform for the movement of the people then there will be handrail there are lighting system cabling system all those stuff are being run through the tunnel with the complete facility the general typical layout or typical components involved in the underground uh, tunnel and the stations
then let's see how the construction the execution part of it being taken up in underground construction is normally there are two methods being adopted like the bottom up construction method or the and the top down construction but uh, bottom up construction method of course we normally know it, it is being uh, conventionally been made the first the food, the basement would be there there uh, foundation foundation from basement then ground floor first floor second floor like that so it, it's called bottom from bottom to top it goes the top down construction is a uh, it's quite opposed to that. Uh, first, we will do the topmost to the slab. Then we will further dig into it and we can have the okay, the next level below. The, then we will go further below. This particular thing called top-down construction. This top-down construction is mostly being um, followed in underground construction where uh, your tunnel boring machine just pass through. Like in case of any requirement where the tunnel boring machine need to be lower then bottom of construction means you need to have a bigger hole so the tunnel boring machine can be lower and the tunnels being that some of the stations which you you can just pass through without without hindering the station works so in that those kind of stations or in those kind of area we can do top down construction wherein we can complete your roof slab first and then we will go to the most and we will go to the platform means uh, the base this is called top down construction see how the top down construction the work sequence like first uh, the retaining the side boundary using the construction of diaphragm walls the d walls uh, normally we call it as a d wall it is a peripheral wall for the particular station and uh, it is being constructed as similar to a piling work the insert uh, the only the piling uh, pile work means we will have a circular uh, cross section of pile which is being done but here the diaphragm wall is nothing but a panel of wall being done in a similar way to the pile. <clears throat> the panel size would be like a 2 meter by the depth of 22 meter or 25 meter based on the structural requirement. The width would be around 900 to 1000 millimeters, say like 0.9 meter to 1 meter would be the width of the wall. Like the length of the wall would be 2 meter or 2.5 meter in panels, so that those panels will be constructed or the panels are being executed one next to the other so that the continuity will be there it forms here a complete box section that is called the construction of d wall which is retaining the earth to the uh, other side of the uh, station see once the uh, particular d wall is being a box is being made the earth inside the station box need to be excavated because we need to have the space for the concourse area platform area and the train which comes up all those things. so that need to be completely uh, taken away so by when you are going to take away the existing the other side of wall it will tend to uh, give more pressure on the d walls so because of that only once this uh, d wall is being constructed when we started the excavating we need to also parallelly cast the slab which will act as a, a strut for these two D walls so that it will not buckle or it will not have a deflection. So this is the purpose of construction of D wall. Then the once the construction of D wall is being done, the borehole installation, see in order to maintain the water table or in order to monitor the water table level, we need to dig the borewells. Okay. And this borewell also, once you start removing the water, then only uh, because of the drawdown, the earth would be dry. For the excavating, that would be fine. When the ex uh, soil is dry, then it's fine. Since that has been done, we are going to do a base level, uh, one slab. In case of your uh, roof slab for the particular station, about 4.5 to 5 meter below the existing road level. So you need to excavate that particular location. Then in this 5 meter or 4.5 meter wall would be. Uh, like a cantilever, right? So, in order to counter the deflection, you may have to provide a yeah, struts, struts of, I'll show you how it would be. Like those struts would be protecting the deflection of the D1. Once that has been done, we need to excavate below up to the uh, roof slab level. Here, the roof slab level is the first slab which we are going to cast. So, in that level, we will uh, do the excavation. Then we will there will be couplers in the D wall 
we will expose those means um, which will be installed during the construction of the wall itself once we uh, excavate up to that level those couplers will be exposed it means we, we will uh, just uh, open it and with uh, all these couplers will be used for connecting the rebars of the roof side so we will just connect the rebars to the couplers which is being kept in the d wall so that it is being a yeah, complete mat which is being supported by these two d walls once this has been done the concrete is being laid and the concrete uh, once it's set we will have a particular uh, location we will have a, a small cut of opening for an excavator to go on deck there that we will see how it is being done then we will do the construction of the next level slab as a concourse slab and the further we will go down and do the base slab and once it is all been done the closing of openings and then uh, once the structural slabs are closed then you will have a complete access for inside the station box or inside the concourse level and platform level you can start your other interfacing work and the construction of operational and non-operational rooms for finishing completion and the final reinstatement of the road level. so this is all the work sequence you know how, how it comes like see the left side which you are seeing the portion showing the completed phase see which i was telling about the roof slab maybe it may be of three meter or four point five meter or five meter it's based on the location so the the roof slab level will be first the roof slab is casted then uh, we will go down and uh, do the uh, next level say like first the d-wall construction once it has been done we, with the excavator up to the roof slab level roof slab bottom level we will do the excavation then there will be couplers that is uh, the rebar couplers will be there in the uh, d-wall the reinforcements are connected to the coupler and the complete slab reinforcement is laid and the concreting is being done. Once this concrete has been done and the concrete achieves its strength, you can have an opening. Before doing the concrete, we will have an open here. So with, with this open, we will lower the excavator with the opening and we will start scooping the earth below this particular slab and take out the mud through the opening. Once we reach the, the concourse level uh, bottom, then the concourse slab is cast up, like what we have done. The same way there will be an opening for the excavator to go below and up to bottom of the base slab. Once that is being done, we will do it is called a base slab. Once it is being done, then we will erect uh, the OT that we call it as a wower traction exhaust like when the train comes and uh, stops there will be a excess heat more so all this heat will be sucked out of the uh, through this duct so that the heat and all this dissipation is being done because it is completely underground now there will be totally rain uh, operations will create heat so that heat all will be dissipated through this once it has been done the platform level is cast will remove or uh, we will close them so then all this internal finishes of the interface work interfacing means the the electrical mechanical and the hvac ventilation work all those vendors will start their work in that area what we will do in the bottom of construction we will just start doing excavating the particular uh, area without doing the slab we will do the uh, strut work means in order to avoid the deflection of this 2D wall, there will be a strut being provided so that the D wall is being intact. So then the excavation will further uh, be excavated and another level strut because there will be number of struts because based on the structural requirement, the strut will be provided and the further the complete earth is being removed, then the bottom slab is casted, then we will make the staging and do the next uh, slab once that is that slab is been done the strut is been removed and the next uh, we will remove this slab and we will do the shuttering for the roof slab and the shuttering once the shuttering for the roof slab is been done this will be removed so like it's a regular construction also those kind of things will be taken up and the, the OD that is being done so it is a regular uh, construction which we are normally we are seeing See, in that particular package where we work, it's about 3.67 lakh 
cubic meter of excavation is being digged out. All these uh, three stations, the excavation uh, quantity per station is around uh, 0.9 lakh, means 1 lakh of uh, cubic meter of air, uh, excavation is being uh, done. About 1.3 lakh cubic meter of concrete is being uh, done for these three stations, uh, about, about 40,000 to 45,000 cubic meter of concrete per uh, station. Around uh, 4,000 to 5,000 cubic meter of the concrete work per month, it, it is the normal which we do it. There are some major uh, quantities like the diaphragm wall, if you see this particular project what we have done, it's about uh, 35,000 square meter piles of having uh, 1,500 diam. See the columns of uh, station box, whatever we are going on, that is all being done with a pile. So for uh, about 1,500 diam pile will be there. So those can, uh, that is about 4,250. Excavation is about 3.4 lakh cubic meter. Concrete is about 1.35 lakh cubic meter. Steel, all those stuff. If you see, it's a huge uh, quantum of work being involved in the construction. It's not like like uh, something is going on in the street, but nobody knows what is going on inside. But this much of huge work is being taken up in the underground construction. That's what I just wanted to show you the quantity so that you will understand the volume of work. Uh, and uh, there are um, major plant and machineries being used there about a, a batching plant, 90 cubic meter capacity of one, and 30 cubic meter capacity of one, and uh, diaphragm wall being about the four machines were there, and all the stuff. There are two gantries for removal of mud. Uh, see, you can have a crane uh, or you can have a the higher capacity uh, gantry crane also you can keep for removing of uh, a concrete boom blazer bar bending shearing machines gantries emot all the stuff being used 